The early game is the most important part in the setup of how your game is going to go. Do these things properly and you'll give yourself an edge over your competition. This series brought in a lot of new people to the channel, so let me introduce myself quickly. What's poppin' everyone, it's your boy Levi, I'm a Titan ranked Eternal Return player and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about playing in the early game. Last episode we talked about what to do before loading into a game, and how to ensure that you'll always get your loot when spawning in. And in this episode we're going to continue with that and explain how to move through each zone. Speed is the most important thing when it comes to looting. You'll hear veteran and eternal return players talk about how the early game is just a speed run to get your build, but let's talk about what that really means. You'll want to get your build preferably just before night 1 is starting. This ensures that as night 1 objectives are spawning, you're able to contest them. Contest bear hunts that are now spawning, defend yourself from people you come across, and look to kill players who don't have their build. This is why you should ignore the early game fights. They'll slow you down, and even if it does result in a kill, you put yourself at risk of dying night 1 for being behind on your build. In fact, any action that doesn't contribute to you getting your build faster should be ignored in the early game. Unless you have your weapon, you should ignore some of the hunts, and typically even with your weapon, you should only take the hunts that are along your path. Boars and wolves take particularly long to clear, and you're not likely to get any materials you need for your build off of them. You can always opt for chickens for leather. I know this is going to sound complicated, but you can actually be a little bit too fast as well. If you ignore all the hunts along your path and speedrun your build, you'll probably complete your build before night 1. It's likely then that you're lower in mastery than where you could have been if you optimized a little bit of hunts into your build. There's a sweet spot between speedrunning your build and hunting for mastery that you'll have to learn through experience of playing. This also doesn't apply for every character. Some characters value transitions more than they do masteries. That's why I think it's best to learn the game through one character first. The direction in which you loot will help dictate how fast you are. It is much slower to zigzag between loot boxes in a distribution than it is to loot in the direction of where you're planning to walk. Whether you're walking to the next zone or the hyperloop, loot in the most logical way. And when I say hyperloop versus walk, it's generally a rule that if your next zone is one zone over and you're on that side of the zone, you should just walk. If your next zone is more than one zone away, or you're on the opposite side and would have to walk through your zone to get there, you should just hyperloop. Hyperlooping will always put you in a loot distribution. For new players, I always recommend following a path where you can prioritize your weapon, crafting it up to purple first. It's the most important piece of your equipment. A few parts ago in the series, I talked about how you should craft when your mobility spell is on cooldown. If you feel like you're behind, you can stop to craft your weapon immediately, but I would only do this for your weapon. It'll slow you down a little bit. Your weapon will ensure that you can take hunts relatively quick and you can defend yourself if players try to grief you. Griefing is used in the Eternal Return community as a term for when players try to fight other players before completing their weapon, build, or doing any action that sabotages both that player and the other player's game. For more Eternal Return terms that the community uses, check out my Eternal Return slang video, card above. When you get used to routing your build, you might want to try prioritizing your boots over your weapon. Upgrading boots first will considerably speed up your routing, assuring you that you can get around the map and through distributions quicker. Like I said earlier, the early game is a speedrun, so these little seconds matter. I do consider this more of an advanced tip, just because without your weapon you'll be prone to being griefed. Your build will sometimes require you to pick up environmental items. These items are leather, rocks, branches, water, and flowers. These items should be picked up as needed and will often take up inventory space when not. On the contrary, if you notice that your inventory is full and you still need some items in the area, you probably should have picked up one of these by then. The optimal way to gather environmental items is to pick them up just before or right after the item that you need them for. Make sure you grab them while they're on the path of your loot distribution. Try not to go too far out of your way to grab them. Water and flowers are the only environmental items that will respawn. Next let's talk about early game food. This is food that usually comes in bulk and can be built along your route or from your starting food. This is important because it will allow you to heal as you take hunts instead of stopping the rest or heal any poke from any player that you come across. Every player starts with 2 bread and 2 water. Burgers are the simplest form of early game food. You can make these by combining meat with your bread. Some zones will allow you to make better food out of your starting bread and some have set food paths. If you start in hospital, all you need to do is grab an alcohol and you can combine it with your starting water to make soju and then bread to make rum raisin bread. Or, if your route goes hospital cemetery, a common route for crit characters, you can combine alcohol from hospital with coffee from cemetery to make coffee liqueur, then combine this with your bread to make mocha bread. A very good food option. Same thing for a build that goes forest, then chapel, then avenue. A common route for amp users. They can combine oriental herbs with flowers, both found in forest, to make orchids then with glass bottles and avenue to make healing potions. If you're struggling to remember food recipes, you can always open blue airdrops. 
Making food is a skill you'll have to learn to get better at at Eternal Return though, and I recommend memorizing a few recipes. I touched on it earlier, but let's talk about the specific types of hunts. In the early game, if you need leather for your weapon, you should always look for chickens. They're the easiest to kill and they will always have a leather. If the leather is for a different slot and you have your weapon, you can start to look at dogs or wolves for leather. Boars take relatively longer to kill than most other hunts and should be avoided if you don't have your weapon or if you're a character that doesn't take hunts quickly. Bats can be taken if you need cameras. This is a 100% drop. You typically don't want to go out of your way to get hunts early unless you're Nadine or Luke with hunting passives or the hunts along your path have been taken. Try to stick to hunts that are along your route and in your final area for your build. Bears will spawn at night one and are a great chunk of XP. If you finish in a bear zone and you don't have plans to contest a night one objective like Meteorite or Tree of Life, look to take them instead. And while we're on night one, there's a few things you want to look for. Presumably, you have your build and you've grabbed the vision console for the zone that you're going to be hanging out in. The first thing you want to do is look out for players with build discrepancies. If there's a player walking around your zone with only three items completed, while you have your full six or even five, you should look to kill them. It's likely that even if it's a bad matchup, you're going to get that kill. Note that I've mentioned that you're in your final area for your route and have basically completed your build at this point. If you're also not full build and even if there is a discrepancy, you'll just be griefing that player and yourself. That's because this fight will take too long even if you do get the kill. I can't stress enough the importance of completing your build. As you play more and more, you'll get a feel for what other characters build, even if you don't play them. A lot of builds are similar and just have a little bit of variation with each other. An example of this is a 3 zone crit build. A popular crit build regardless of what weapon you go, goes hospital, cemetery, and then one other zone. Typically dock. Pistol users can take this build and build Glock as their weapon. Bow users can also take this build and go Jeeb's bow as your weapon. This will give you a feel of what potential matchups you might have in that zone, or whether or not you need to leave right away after getting your build, or if you want to hang around because you know there's a character that's going to be coming in slower than you are. To recap, your night 1 checklist should always be number 1, finish your build. Anything later than the start of night 1 and you'll start to be considered behind. And you should probably avoid high traffic areas near objectives or other players to complete it. Number 2, know what you're going to do next. Is your plan to go to night 1 meteorite? Or night 1 tree of life? Or is it to farm some zones with bears? Do you need more food? Are you going to be going to alpha when night 1 ends? Or a battle zone? And which one? What's the optimal path to get there? Number 3, working towards your weapon skill. Regardless of what you're going to do next, you're going to want to try and get your weapon skill unlocked. In essence, it gives you either utility or another tool in a fight that can be a difference maker. And the last thing you can do is prep any transitions. Does your first rare resource not build from any of your current items? A lot of amp users like to go Glacial Shoes or Bracelet of Scotty for their first Tree of Life item, but these items don't build out of your base build. You might want to prep the components if you have time before you get to that objective, and eventually learn to prep them on your route if you know you're going to be contesting that objective every game. All these are tips to help you make it through the early game, as it's one of the most important factors in dictating how the rest of your game is going to go. Next time we're going to be taking a look at the mid game in Eternal Return. If you find that your routes are heavily contested, you're going to want to go back and watch the video in the end card on the steps that you need to take before you even load in the game.